All right, guys, UFC Austin is in the books. I am also out of town this weekend, so we are still mobile. And we got to talk about how this judging is really ruining the sport of MMA. I mean, it's probably because we use the boxing criteria. I think it's the the boxing uh, judging system in MMA, which it it has its own flaws, pros and cons, whatever you want to call it. But I don't understand how they were getting some of these scorecards the way that they were, how the judging was this bad, okay? We're going to get into that. We're going to get into the main event. We're going to get into all of that. Uh, I went two for five on the main card, bombed, completely bombed, okay? And everything that could have gone wrong, I noticed in the Marquez and Rodriguez fight. I was watching... Julian Marquez and Rodriguez, and I was saying, you know what? Marquez can win this fight if he just stays behind the jab, gets Rodriguez up against the fence, wears him out, gets him down, and he may be able to get a tap here. He may be able to do some work on the ground because I believe his groundwork is better. Turns out, he decides in the first round that he's going to trade right hands with Rodriguez, who is the longer, more athletic fighter, and he's going to get knocked out on his feet. And as soon as I saw that in the first round, I was like, okay, the rest of the card is going to suffer for me. I just knew it. I knew it was going to be one of those cards where I just completely bombed. And, you know, it is what it is. The next fight with uh, Ismegulov and Kuteletsi was exactly what I predicted, decision for Ismegulov, but this is where the judging starts to fuck around here. Where is the 3027 coming from? Ismegulov versus Kuteledze should not have been a 3027. If anything, if anything, and the way I had it scored was 29-28 Ismegulov. This is the starting of judging you know, starting to mess around with the fight here because I'm like, listen, if more of these fights go to a decision, we're going to see some weird fucking decisions. So after that fight, I was like, listen, we cannot see any more decisions. Like some people are going to get robbed. If we, if, if the decisions are off by that much, we're going to see a robbery happen. Okay. Next fight up, we have, we have, Buckley versus Dureyov. Now, in this fight, I said Dureyov. I thought he was going to win. I thought he was going to be able to get him down. You saw that. You saw Dureyov get Buckley down, make him work from those positions. But I also said that I could see Buckley getting a clear knockout or I could see Dureyov winning, uh, you know, on the ground by arm triangle. Now, over the course of the fight, Dureyov was getting pieced up. And Buckley is very explosive, completely took him out of the fight. I mean, completely took him out of the fight. Dr. Stoppage, good win for Buckley. He's going up in his division. He's doing good things, right? Already, I'm down. Already, I'm down. Now, next fight, very inconsistent flip-floppity type card. Flip-floppity, flip-flop type card. We have Tim Means versus Kevin Holland. Now, I did not I did not expect Kevin Holland to get the win by submission. But you can clearly see that Kevin Holland striking along with his reach is going to be a problem for a lot of these welterweights and I said this. Now, he couples that up with good submission skills. I think he has a chance in the welterweight division. I really do think he has a chance to do some great work in this division. I think middleweight was a tough division for him. Welterweight, he has a chance to go a little further. Now, after this win, everybody's calling Kevin Holland a superhero. Can we stop simping for Kevin Holland? The MMA media is very inconsistent on who it supports and who it fawns after. I mean, it really is, okay? When Derek Lewis was helping people out in Houston, Texas because of a hurricane, you know, they were, they were on it. Like they, 
you know, they took notice of it. Kevin Holland chased down some some criminal and like the MMA media completely lost it. They were like, oh my God, this guy should get a, uh, a vest. He should get some sort of award. You know, every time Kevin Holland is out there uh, doing something, the MMA media is just right around the corner, like waiting for something to happen. Like, oh my God, did Kevin Holland save a kid? Did he save a kitten from a tree? Like, I don't know why the MMA media loves to simp over Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland's a good fighter, good character, great personality. We get it. Let's just, let's just let things go. All right. Let's just let things naturally have a cycle. Okay. If the MMA media and the regular media in the world runs on like 48 hour to 72 hour timetable, the MMA media runs on like a fucking 96 hour timetable for Kevin Holland. I don't know why it just does. It just does. It's so weird. It is what it is. Let's leave that alone. Then we have the main event, right? We have the main event, Josh Emmett, Calvin Cater. This was the robbery. I knew, I knew if one of these fights went to a decision past that Kutaledzi is Megulov fight. I knew, I knew right then that a robbery was around the corner and it had to be the main event. It had to be the main event instead of giving Qatar the win, which he won the fight. He won three rounds out of the fight. He won three rounds. Damage, strikes, all of that is there. All of that is there. But some judge gave Emmett the fourth round. The least, the least, uh, you know, the, the least controversial round that there was. I think Calvin Cater won the fourth round. He wobbled Josh Emmett in that fight. He wobbled him in the fourth round, nearly finished him in the fourth round, but somehow Josh Emmett won the fourth round on that scorecard. Sal D'Amato. Sal D'Amato and Chris Lee, I think it was. What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? Sal D'Amato, you've been around for a long time, bud. This decision, you guys should just leave. leave. Just leave the sport. Leave the sport alone. Let someone else who is maybe a YouTuber or someone who follows the sport and actually knows what's going on, let them get a crack at it. All right. This is why I started my YouTube channel. This is one of the reasons why I started my, my YouTube channel. Yes, I'm a big MMA fan. Yes, I, I love combat sports. But you need to realize this. These old heads, Sal D'Amato, Chris Lee, you know, even Joe Rogan, right? I love Joe Rogan, but even Joe Rogan, Bisbing, they cannot be around the sport forever. They cannot. Their, their time is going to come where they're going to have to step away. Someone's going to have to pick up the mantle. Now, I'm not saying, listen, I'm not throwing my name in the hat and saying, I'm the guy to go in there, start commentating, start judging. Like, I'm not saying I'm that guy. But what I am saying is, I'm putting it out there that there is going to be a need for someone to step in, in their place. And who are you going to choose, right? Are you going to choose someone who has gotten hit in the head repeatedly over and over in their career to sit in a commentary booth and lose it and be somewhat subpar? Or are you going to let a fan who has been watching the sport for like 15 years and who knows the criteria, who knows the judging criteria, who understands the sport, who trains themselves, are you going to let that person in? Are you going to let the person with a body of work that can show for five to 10 plus years who has been covering the sport for that long, or you're just going to let some, you know, fighter who retired, just get the job, get the position in media. This is going to be a test. This is going to be a thing that happens in the future where there is going to be a need for someone to step in and that's judges and that's 
commentary positions, and that's any position that you see in the company, it's going to have a need. The UFC will grow. MMA will grow. So if you are a fan and you really see yourself doing some sort of job in mixed martial arts or in the UFC, this is your time to start a body of work, either in journalism or you know, YouTube or Instagram, start something where you're actually going to put your body of work out there. And when the time comes for these positions and these openings, you are the person that they may look to. You are the person that can drop their name in the hat. You know, again, not to, you know, backtrack here, but this is something that we need to understand. The judging is going to be the same as long as we have the same judges. As long as we have the same people that see the sport the same way, we are going to get the same results, okay? So I encourage every one of you, if you are passionate about good judging, the sport being prosperous, going into its next you know, phase, start something. Start a YouTube channel. Start a Instagram. Start something where you can put forth your knowledge and expertise of the sport and get it out there because there there is going to be a need. You see it right now. There is going to be a need, okay? So that's that. But as far as Josh Emmett goes and this win, right? I do not believe that Josh Emmett is going to beat Holloway or Volkanovsky. I believe that Holloway and Volkanovsky are probably better than than Emmett, okay? I I would say that they are. Now, I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong, and Emmett comes through. He comes through with shining colors. Who knows? But I will tell you right now, Josh Emmett does not beat Volkanovsky, and he does not beat Holloway. And I don't think that this performance gets him a title shot. Just because he calls for it does not mean that this gives him a title shot. However, they're likely going to give it to him because outside of Holloway, there really isn't a ton of challengers that they want to give a shot to. Emmett seems like the guy that they're going to go with. Now, whatever. But, but, there's no way that Emmett won that fight. He won... One and three. That's about it. Two, four, and five. Cater won that fight. That's my opinion on it, guys. Let me know what you guys think about this card overall. The main event. Was it a robbery? The judging. And your overall feelings about this down in the comment section. Also, if you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. It really helps the channel grow and gets the videos out there. I'm trying to get to 2,000 subs. Please help me out. Also, if you guys haven't already, consider subscribing. I upload every week on combat sports, MMA, news commentary, current events. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.